You're listening to the Write Project Podcast and Radio Program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Today on the Right Project Podcast, we are joined by Nicole Little. Nicole Little is an acclaimed short story author who has been featured in more than a half dozen titles just in the last year. She has been featured in Kitsora, the autobiography, uh, the best-selling dystopia from The Rock, Flights from the Rock, Monsters, Beyond, and Apocalypse. She will be featured in other upcoming productions from Black Hair Press, including Apocalypse, Eerie Christmas, Love, and Bad Romance in 2020. It's just a plethora of short story material, a lot of which has has become bestsellers since, getting her name out there a whole lot. Currently, she is working on The Lotus Fountain, which is going to be one of the books included in, or novellas included in a big project from Engine Books that we can talk about now called Slipstreamers, which is a multi-author novella series which hopes to release one book, one novella a month starting in 2020. Thank you for joining us, Nicole. Thanks for having me. No problem, no problem. So, you do you ever not write? Like, this is a whole lot of stuff that I just listed off. Not very often. I, I do take breaks, but I, I always... I always say, oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to have a little break. I'm just going to work on one project at a time. And then something else will pop up and I'll say, oh, I'm just going to give this a try. And then everybody will laugh at me. And my husband makes fun of me all the time because I say I'm going to take a break and then I never actually do. Yeah. Um, but it's something I enjoy. It's, um, you know, I uh, sit down in the evenings with the computer and sometimes I write a lot. Sometimes I write a little, but, you know, every every bit counts. Absolutely. That's a great attitude. But I mean, like, Kit Sora was the first one you had published, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that came out last December. Yes. So these nine credits that you have are from the last nine months. Yes, that's correct. That's a bit insane, even for <laughs> short fiction. That's that's an interesting rate of production. What, uh, what do you attribute that to? I don't know. I just... I just like to keep busy. As a mom, you spend a lot of time focused on other people. And, um, you know, which is great. And don't get me wrong, I I love being a mom. But I found it was really important to do things for me, too. And that's when I really started um, taking it seriously. I've always written um, since I was small. But um, it was more like a hobby. And I never really had, I guess, the courage to submit to anything or that's to, ended. you know, well, yeah, <laughs> that's what I did. I, you know, on a, on a whim, I just decided, hey, this is something I want to try. You know, I'm getting closer to 40 and I just went for it and I haven't stopped. <laughs> yeah, I think you're the first time you submitted, you won that Kitsora contest. Did you not? Um, I, 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 I'd submitted a couple of times before, like maybe like twice, I okay. think. And, uh, yeah, it hadn't been, it hadn't been too many times and, and, uh, and, and I was selected, yeah. So, yeah, your, your short fiction even placed in a short story contest held by Wano, the Nightmare on Water Street, that's correct? Yes, it did, yeah. And was that one of the ones that's published or another one entirely? No, that's a different one entirely. It had been something that just sort of, I don't know, I just had this idea in my head and I didn't have it really for any particular project. And, but that's, I do that sometimes, I just write stuff because i need to get it out of my head and maybe eventually i'll find home for it so that's what i did with that one i had it about three quarters of the way done and i saw like the advertisements for it and stuff and i thought maybe you know like i'll give it a try and uh, i was (laughs) super nervous because i get really nervous reading in front of like a big group of people it's a it's a bit easier now but back then well it was last year but still um I was super, super nervous to do it. Once I get up there, I'm okay. But I can remember sitting there at the back of the of the bar and just being like really, really nervous listening to everybody else read. But once I got up there, it was great. I had lots of fun. Yeah. Okay. Is that um, 
so was that your first time reading? Because I know we've, I, I didn't realize that you didn't like public speaking because we've dragged you up on stage to read <laughs> at the dystopia and flights from the rock launches. Well, it's not so much that I don't like it. Like, I actually do really enjoy it. It's just I can't get past this whole, like, really nervous feeling that I get in the lead up to it. Yep. Once I'm there, like, once I'm up in front of everybody and I start reading, I'm fine and I really enjoy it. But it's just the lead up to it. I I did public speaking competitions when I was a teenager. And did, I volunteered with the Writers Alliance and I read to... Um, a group of seniors at a complex out in um, Paradise. Oh, that's that was really nice. I can't remember. It was it was, it was last year sometime. Um, but um, uh, even though I did slightly get heckled by one man, it was it was still a lot of fun, and everybody How were you really heckled? enjoyed it. He, uh, he wasn't very pleased because there was some mild violence in the story, and he he did he didn't like that. I see. I see. The story was <laughs> not was, for him. But they were they were so sweet, and he um, he he wasn't like mean about it or anything, and and I of course like you know that doesn't bother me. I was like, well, that's fine, you know. Not everybody's I'm not everybody's cup of tea. It's okay. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you got up there and they're like, oh look, she's so sweet. Let's hear this story <laughs> about daffodils, and then it's like, yeah. he chopped off her head. It was that's that's actually quite accurate. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, okay, so you've got this massive library of short fiction already. From what it sounds like, you've got even more on the back burner, more stuff that you've written over the years and stuff like that, so that's really interesting. Tell me what you can about the Slipstreamers project. This is maybe our first time mentioning it out loud, uh, but the Slipstreamers project is a group of novellas that will be, each one will be written by a different author, uh, with one author contributing consistently throughout it, uh, J.D. Riot. Uh, so J.D. is going to team up with all the other authors and write the stuff. So Nicole is going to be working with J.D. Riot on a title called The Lotus Fountain, which is going to take place about midway through the season. Uh, Slipstreamers is about a character called Cassidy King, and she can travel between dimensions via portals and uh, is an Indiana Jones-style character. What can you tell us about your story, the adventure that you're going to take her on, um, Nicole? Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm, like, super excited about this. Um, I sort of envisioned it a bit as she was sort of set up for this, and so ultimately she lands in this world that seems really perfect, um, she's there for a little while, but she starts to notice, hey, where are all the men? And so it's like a perfect world? Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, they, so they've got this um, this perfect world. Um, you know, it's everything you'd imagine a utopia to be. You know, it's got fountains and beautiful flowers and beautiful people there's a harmony. lotus fountain yes exactly mm. <laughs> and um so she thinks wow this place is great but it's just a little bit too great gotcha um yeah i don't want to give too much away um but she starts getting a bit suspicious everybody's young and happy and there's an awful lot of pregnant women around as well. Okay. So that's a little bit of a mystery there. and uh, Well, that sounds like a contradiction right off the bat. I can't wait to figure yeah, that out. Yeah, there's some big... Uh, she's she's going to have to make some big decisions towards the end of it, I think. Okay. Excellent. 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 That sounds really fun, and it sounds like something I'm going to look forward to reading. I think everyone should uh, should keep an eye out for when that comes out. Uh, you can follow Nicole on Goodreads and stuff like that. She's been in a bunch of different titles now, so if you follow her on Goodreads or Amazon, it'll pop up when she does something new, especially a novel or novella. So what else are we working on, if anything? Any, like, short story projects on the horizon or anything like that? Yeah, I've got. Uh, I'm working on a couple of things for the uh, for the pulp sci-fi from the raw. That's the <laughs> deadline of which is in twenty three days, twenty four days. Yeah, yeah. I've really got to buckle down, and uh, I've got some editing to do. I'm editing one right now, and I've got because uh, you know I always like to submit two. I can't just do one. Of course not. I've got to I've got to do two. Mm. So I've uh, I'm, I'm editing one right now. 
you know how fun that is oh yes and uh <laughs> i've just got to finish up the ending on the second one and then i'll be uh i'll be all done with that okay. um that's about uh that's that's what i'm focusing on now plus uh you know i'm just doing some work on on the lotus fountain so just trying to concentrate on those two i'm waiting to um I've had two acceptances to uh, the Love Anthology from Black Hair Press. Yep. I'm waiting to hear back on a third one now because you uh, you wait for a rejection or an acceptance before you can submit uh, a- another one. Okay. So I'm waiting to hear back on my third one now. I've got a couple waiting in the wings for that. You know, they're just a little short drabble, so like 100 words. So, you know, they're not too taxing. Yep. Um, so I've had a couple of those waiting in the wings and... Uh, I did those ages ago, though, so that's that's nothing really that new. But yeah, just sort of focusing on on pulp sci-fi and uh, and the slip streamers at the moment. Awesome, awesome, yeah. blossom, awesome stuff. Great. It sounds like you've just got a lot going on. That sounds really interesting. I do. Yeah, <laughs> it's great though. I don't I don't know how to not have a lot going on. So there was a, a scandal involving you uh, at the Dystopia from the Rock launch. Uh, I have to ask: Have you stolen <laughs> any more? stories from your children no i have not um bridget is keeping a lot of her short story ideas to herself now that's good that's good i told her about copyright law and stuff (laughs) she's uh she's been uh keeping them herself you know in her uh she's got like um we we redid her bedroom she's got this whole big desk now with drawers and stuff so she's she's keeping it you know quiet now i'm not allowed to to know about her story ideas that she has that's for the best (laughs) I did, however, you know, I made sure she got some credit for it. And I always tell people that she helped me with the idea of the story. I see. She That's was content good. with that. That's good. For now. <laughs> for now, yeah. yeah. Wait until she's older and she uh, she decides she wants more compensation. Yeah. It's the fruit of the poisonous tree thing. That was the first one, one of the first ones you had published. So she's like... Because of this, your career happened. So now that you're like one of the best-selling authors ever, I need a substantial cut of that because I got you started. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see that happening. Yeah, I can see the wheels turning in her head already. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, great stuff. Uh, well, I had some questions for you that we ask most authors that come on. If that's okay. Yeah. Okay, of Nicole course. Little, what uh, was your favorite book from childhood? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, how will I pick one? <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to, I, though. Uh, I, I have so many. Um, I've actually started reading my favorite books from when I was a kid with um, Bridget. She's my oldest, so the little one's a bit too young for it yet. So we've been working our way through them this year. The first one is, uh, well, it, the book was put out with two different titles. So the one I read when I was a child, was called The Doll. Um, But the one that I managed to, I don't think they're actually being printed anymore, but I managed to snag a copy off eBay. It was called Yesterday's Doll, but it's the same book. It's by, I can't remember the author's name now, I think it's Cora Taylor or something like that. It sounds like a horror Um, novel. It's not. It's actually, it's about um, this little girl who, um, she gets sick with a fever And she's at her grandmother's house. There's this family doll, and they give it to her while she's sick and sleeping there. And when she goes to sleep, this doll transports her to the past. And it's just, yeah, it's just, it's it's really, I I, I loved it when I was a kid. And uh, I loved it again when I was an adult. I really enjoyed reading it. So we read that one a few months ago. Another one is The Westing Game. Okay. That's by uh, Ellen Raskin, I think is the author. Um, that's a, that's another really great one. It's funny. Um, it's about these um, it's about this guy named Sam Westing, and he's super rich, and he's like owns this big conglomerate, and the conglomerate's what started this town, which is Westing Town. And um, it starts out with uh, all these people getting an invitation to the reading of his will, and they're all heirs to the will, but none of them know each other. They have virtually no connection to Sam Westing. So it's this whole big whodunit mystery sort of, yeah, it's, it's, I remember when I was reading it when I was a kid, I was just blown away by it. It's so well written and the dialogue is just so crisp and so clever 
and uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it as a child. Enjoyed it again um, as an adult. And uh, although poor Bridget had to put up with me crying at the end of it, I was like, "But it's so sad. Don't you find it sad?" <laughs> so it's uh, yeah, and and um, of course there was like you know like Harry Potter and stuff like that. Although I didn't really read that when I was a child. No, I'm gonna um, say that's it, that's chronologically <laughs> impossible. <laughs> yeah. So, but that one's that's. Those two are definitely the ones. There's another one called um, A City Out of Sight by Ivan Southall. And uh, that one I read when I was a little bit older. I think I was probably around you know, like 13 or 14. It's about a group of children. Um, they're on their way to a birthday party on a plane. And the plane crashes on this island. And it's about how they survive on the island together. It's a bit sort of, oh, I can't remember the name of the book now. It reminds me of another book anyways. But it, yeah, it's, it's another really good one. I also have a copy of that one here, but I think she's a bit too young for it yet. Okay. But we'll, we'll read it eventually. All right. Well, too bad you don't like any books. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you open up a can of worms here when you ask me about books I like, because okay. I could talk forever about that. There are other questions about that. Okay. One oh, second. Oh, great. <laughs> one second. What is your favorite book? underappreciated novel so a novel that maybe you really love but you don't feel like anyone's ever heard of or doesn't appreciate uh well i read one um not too long ago it's i haven't never i haven't heard anybody here speak about it um i don't know anybody else that's read it it's called uh, it's it's new it's a young adult novel it's called the devouring gray um it's by a um by an author called um, Christine Lynn Herman. Okay. Um, it's, um, I, I don't even know if I've got to, the, like, it was just magical. Like, it just really just sucks you in and you just become a part of this. I mean, her world building is incredible. And she's just got all these really, like, quirky, just um, great characters and like, you, you really don't know what's going to happen next. Like, you think you've got it figured out, and then you turn the page, and it's like, what? And, um, yeah, it's about this small town. Some really messed up stuff happens in this small town. And there's magic, and this big scary monster. And, like I said, it's a young adult novel, so it, it, it's got, like, young people in it. There's adults as well, obviously. Um, but, um, as I said, like, I don't mind... I read pretty much anything. Sure. I, I just, I just, yeah, I'm really surprised that nobody that I know of has heard of this book. Well, they have now. I think, well, it's, it's fairly popular down the States, I think, so much so that she's writing a sequel. I've actually followed her on Twitter for quite some time. This is her first novel. Um, she's fairly young. And you can just tell that she really just poured her heart and her soul into this book. You can see it on the pages. You can tell that it's been so lovingly crafted and that she has just spent so much time on every single word and every single sentence. And you can tell that she loves her characters and um, she kind of wants you to love them too. It was just, yeah, it was a really great book and I was super sad when it ended. <laughs> wow. Okay. That sounds lovely. Um, I guess you'll be looking for the sequel to that. Oh, I am keeping my uh, eye out for that, definitely. Um, I'm not sure when it's coming out. I think it's sometime next year. Wow, okay. Yep. Nicole Little, what is your favorite unknown book? So we're talking indie books, small press, something that could use a signal boost. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I really enjoyed um, Amanda Levante's Supernatural Causes. Oh, wow. Okay, excellent. I read them when they first came out, and they were only, like, available in uh, the digital copies. Yeah. And they were oh, just so, like, clever, and the dialogue was funny, and just such a, a really neat idea, something different, you know, like... Yeah, I just really enjoy it, like, nice and fresh, and, um, yeah, something different when there's, you know, a lot of stuff has been done with, like, vampires and werewolves and stuff like that, and I just thought it was a really neat new idea. 
Um, I really enjoyed reading them. I recommended them to anybody who would listen to me. Hmm. Um, so I know they've been around for a bit of time now, but yeah, uh, it's definitely something that I, I would still recommend for people to read. Great series. The second ones are starting to come out this month, so that's that's lovely. Oh, perfect. Good timing. Yeah, very good timing. <laughs> Nicole Little, what's the first book that ever made you cry? Oh, my word. I don't know if I can remember back that far. <laughs> um, for me, it was do, Grover's first I, day of school. <laughs> um, I'm quite an emotional person, so, like, happy stuff makes me cry. Sad stuff, obviously, makes me cry. Okay. Um, Oh, I don't know. Like, I do, like I said, I read, like, a lot of romance novels when I was a teenager. Potentially something there. The thing that stands out the most to me would probably be Outlander. Okay. Uh, I shed so many tears over that book. I've read it a few times over the years now. Um, yeah, there's some pretty gut-wrenching scenes You in should that check book. out um, uh, Candace Osmond's Pirate books. They're the... Oh. Um, the, one second, I've got them here. Dark Tides. Candace Osmond has okay. a series called Dark Tides, but it's it's very much Outlander meets Pirates of the Caribbean oh. with some time travel mixed in. Oh, well, that's all stuff I like. Yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry, continue. <laughs> no, yeah, like, I just, yeah, that one has always, um, I don't know, struck a chord with me. Like, the, the relationship between Jamie and Claire has always been... I guess the epitome of what, you know, a relationship should be in that sort of book, like, has always been, I guess, like the most romantic couple I can think of in, 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 in any sort of book. So that is always, yeah, sort of makes me tear up a little bit when I think about it. Nicole, does writing energize you or does it exhaust you? Uh, I always sort of like, I will find myself, especially if I'm nearing the end of something, you know, I feel the end coming. Yep. I'm always pretty, it's like I've, it's like I've had like a couple of cups of coffee and it's really hard for me to come down from that. Um, like I said, I write a lot in the evenings and in the nights, like before bed, cause it's pretty much the only free time I have. Um, so it always, yeah, really like energizes me and really gets me like, you know, excited about stuff and it will take me a while to, um, to come down off that. So I have to like read in bed for a bit to try to you know, relax a bit, especially if it's something that I, um, really happy about. Like if I know I've nailed the ending or if I've, um, gotten through a particularly rough section that I was having trouble with and I've got it down, then yeah, usually, usually gives me, makes me pretty energetic. I, I don't think it makes me tired. I mean, I suppose sometimes it does, but usually it just sort of gets me all, you know, pumped up and, and excited to do more. Awesome. That's good. Nicole Little, have you ever considered writing under a pseudonym? No. <laughs> um, I, well, I guess I, I suppose I kind of do in a way. Um, I, I write under my maiden name. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, like I don't, I don't, I don't really use my, like I didn't, when I got married, I didn't change my name. I got my license or anything like that. Um, I usually go by it on social media and stuff like that, and like, um, but I, I always, I keep, I kept Nicole Little as as the name that I, uh, that I write on. That's that's my, that's my maiden name. That's the one I was born with. So that explains why at Dystopia, when I asked Bridget if my like little person joke uh, or like <laughs> little the last name joke, I asked her if it was appropriate, and I asked her if she would be insulted. She was like. Why would I be insulted? Because <laughs> that's not her last name. No, actually, her last name is Little. We have one each. Oh, really? I know. I know that sounds silly. No, that sounds lovely. I, me, me, and Bridget are Little, and uh, Sebastian and Susie are Gagnon. Oh, in so that case, that makes perfect sense. So again, so in that case, she was just looking at me like I was crazy, like I thought originally. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Makes she looks at me a lot like that too, though. So yeah. you know, don't feel too bad. <laughs> no, I do not. Yeah, no. My my goal in life around children usually is to make them look at me like I'm insane. <laughs> Nicole, little, do you hide any secrets in your in your store that only a few people will ever pick up on? I use. I like to. I like to sneak in the names of people that I know. That's common. Yep. 
Um, I think that's I think that's about it. Or like inside jokes, or um, like sometimes it's only stuff that I find funny. Yeah. <laughs> and that I tell people about afterwards. But yeah, I like I like to use um, like the kids' names, like um, the story that was in Kit Sora. Yeah. The main character's name is Bridget. That was that was after my daughter. Oh, I see. So there's um, a lot you owe her, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is gonna come back to haunt me one of these days. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's about it. Like I I, I try to um, and I, I take little bits of like personality traits from other people, and uh, but nothing like you know, uh, maybe I like sometimes I might base a character on me or like who I would like to be, sure. like maybe somebody who's a little more bold or something like that. Um, or I take little bits of like I might take bits of personality from like my kids or from my husband or um, like a story I'm working on now. I'm using my dad's name. Dad has a pretty unusual name, so I'm I figure you know let me just put that in there. That'll be funny. <laughs> sure, that's that sounds fun. Perfect, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> in your opinion, what is the most unethical practice in the publishing industry right now? Oh my goodness. Well, I know I've seen a lot of stuff about. Um, companies that say they're going to uh, publish your uh, work, but then they require you to pay them. Vanity Press, disguising itself yes. as publisher, yeah. Yes, or like, um, and they're basically just printers who, you know, don't do any of the work. Basically, you're the one who's left, you know, doing all the marketing and um, the sales and stuff like that, and you have end up paying them like a huge chunk of money yeah, i've seen quite a few things like that on uh yeah on twitter people you know complaining about it and stuff like that it's that's a fleecing horrible. scam really yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah no that's that's very true and while i mean not to s set up the right like when it comes to uh, marketing a lot of times like first time authors or even small press publishers uh, might not have the money for a lot, a lot of marketing. Like it's pretty much become a thing where authors are even bigger ones uh, are kind of required to do a fair yes. chunk of marketing themselves. But it should all be stuff that doesn't cost the author yes, money. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if there's ads that need to be paid for, that comes out of the publisher. If it's just making an appearance, yeah, yeah, you should probably do that if you're an author. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Great answer. Yeah, that's that's really wretched in our industry right now, especially the yeah. amount like of ones that are kind of disguising themselves as publishers. Like if they called themselves printers or even vanity printers or whatever they want to call themselves, that's fine. But when you call yourself a publisher, it creates this false expectation of what a publisher is. Yeah, it's all this cloak and dagger stuff when there's no like me be more transparent about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my big go-to for it uh, is if you go on their website and you can easily find their submissions, that's not a publisher. Yeah. Because a publisher shouldn't be trying to sell you on getting your book published. A publisher should be trying to sell you books. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you. In your opinion, what are common traps for aspiring authors or young writers? I think... Maybe a lot of the time people are, much like myself, afraid to take a chance. I have spoken to so many people who are, I mean, I guess just starting out. And um, they're just not, I mean, it's not so much that they're not confident. It's just, it's scary putting your work out there and then having it trampled on. Because you get so many rejections, so so many rejections. Have you though? And uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't worry, I've gotten a, f a fair few. Okay. Um, but it's you know you just keep going. Like if I gave up the first time I got a rejection, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I think you just got to keep plugging on and keep trying and keep learning and keep trying to. I mean, you, you might never perfect your craft, but. You know, you keep learning, you keep practicing, you know, you engage with other authors and um, other writers and just, yeah, just try to keep doing as much as you can to improve your skills. Good answer. 
Well, thanks very much for coming on, Nicole. Thanks so much for having me. It's been great. Great. Well, you can see more from Nicole in future Black Hair Press anthologies, as well as uh, Engine Books anthologies that she's already imprinted, possibly more soon, according to her with the Pulp Sci-Fi submission. And also in 2020, look for The Lotus Fountain, uh, one of the novellas that will be produced as part of the Slipstreamer series. Thanks for coming on, Nicole. Thanks so much. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.